accounting standard costs. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our email address and our phone number. And a good website, which is for one of the universities, that has some PowerPoints from professors on some of these topics. We want to move to a new topic in cost accounting called standard cost. And here's the way we can introduce it. We can't plan anything without some standards or some norms that we have to assume when we're coming up with a budget. So think about a recipe. In a recipe, you have to ask yourself two questions. How much should we use? And what is the cost of what we're planning to use, what we should use? Those two comments bring us to the formula for standard cost. Standard input allowed for one unit times the cost of the standard input, whatever you're inputting. So for my blue gene example, the standard input might be denim allowed for one unit, a unit being a pair of genes, times the cost for that amount of denim that you're putting into the genes. I'm going to flip over to Excel in my example here. Moving up to the top just a little bit. This is my Levi's Jeans factory and we're talking, we're planning standard costs for the 2010 budget. So we have in the top section the standard or planned data and in the second section in blue we have actual results. So you'll see example and in the example for denim we're planning on two square yards for a pair of jeans times 250 a yard five dollars standard cost pair of denim jeans. For labor we think it's going to take 15 minutes or a quarter of an hour 0.25 times a labor rate of twenty dollars an hour we're going to pay five dollars in labor to cut and sew those jeans so those are what we're planning but when we look at our actual results it's different for example the denim is needed more we use more denim actually than we plan for 2.7 versus 2 but we got lucky because the cost per the denim the cost per yard is lower. We actually paid 2.3 and we had planned on 2.5. The bottom line result is though because we use so much more denim our actual cost per pair of jeans is 6.21 as opposed to 5. So our actual costs were higher which is unfavorable. Bad. On the other hand for labor we plan for 15 minutes or 0.25 percent of an hour. We only took 0.22 percent of an hour so that improved. We used less time but our labor rate instead of being 20 was 21 dollars an hour. So we used a little less time but we paid for more labor for that time. As a result the amount of time we saved had a greater impact than the higher rate for the labor so we actually had a cost for direct labor per pair of jeans that was lower than the five dollars that we planned for. We only paid four sixty two. Now let's talk about a term we used before called variance and I'm going to say variance from standard here. There are two reasons why our standard prices may be more or less, our actual results may be more or less than our standard results. And the first is price variance. We paid a different price for the material of the labor. The formula is actual price versus standard price for whatever the actual amount of quantity we used. So one difference is we simply paid a different amount. The second difference is efficiency which is we used a different amount of stuff. We used a different amount of, of stuff whether that stuff is labor or materials. So the formula here is actual quantity used differs from standard quantity for the standard price. When I flip back over to my Excel document, you'll see at the bottom here that we have figured out the price variance for both direct material and direct labor. And I'm going to scroll down just a little bit so we can see the whole thing. Let's look at material first, the denim. The actual price that we paid was $2.30. The standard price we expected to pay was $2.50, so we paid a little less we multiply that by the actual quantity we have a favorable price variance because it's a negative number we paid less so that's good on the other hand for labor we expected we actually paid a labor price of twenty one dollars an hour we expected to pay a labor price of twenty 
our actual quantity we used a little less in labor than we expected 0.22 instead of 0.25 hours so we have an unfavorable variance because the higher rate, wage rate had a bigger impact than saving a little time so we had an unfavorable direct labor variance so these are the two variances that deal with the differences in price Let's look at the example for efficiency. Same data, except now we're looking at the efficiency vari variance, which is how much stuff did you use compared to your plan, your standard. So in looking at the material, the denim, we actually used 2.7 yards. We expected to use 2 yards. We multiply that by the standard price of 2.5. We have an unfavorable variance because the quantity that we used was so much higher unfavorable we paid more on the labor side the efficiency variance we expected we actually use 0.22 hours we expected to use 0.25 multiply that by our standard price and you see we have a favorable variance a negative number by just a little bit because we use just a little bit less direct labor so again the price variance flipping back has to do with differences in prices. The efficiency variance has to do with the amount of stuff that you use. That's the way to remember these two variances. That's the end of part 10 of cost accounting. We're going to continue on with standard costing in part 11 on YouTube. Our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, all one word. You can find a complete list of our videos on our website, which is below here, STL Test. Net. We have live one-on-one -on -one tutoring, group sessions, and live chat sessions. Our email and our phone number are listed here. We'll see you next time.